Hey, change agents, and welcome to another episode of uh, Mission Mon um, Impact Monday. <laughs> it's Monday, right? So, anyways, welcome to another session of Impact Monday. My name is Tracy D. Allen, and today we're going to be talking about government contracting, what you need to know. So, Buckle up, get your pen and paper, and be ready to take a few notes. Because if you are thinking about expanding your business into the government contracting space, diversifying the revenue streams that come into your money and your um, that come into your business and level up your business, then you want to seriously consider getting into the government contracting space. And I'm going to give you a brief. 360,000 level overview of what it's like to get into this industry. So again, if this is your first time watching, welcome. My name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where we help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures, maximize their revenue streams, and impact their communities. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, set your notification. However it is that you want to find us, make sure to do that. And sharing is caring, so share with a friend and let's get right into it. So like I said, today we're talking about government contracting and how to get into that space. What is it that you need to know? Because there's a lot of misinformation going around about what government contracting is and what it's like to be a government contractor or to get into the government contracting space. And I want to kind of demystify a little bit of those um, misnomers so that you truly understand what you're getting into. I'm looking from side to side. I'm trying to get my stuff up right. So the first thing that you want to do um, when you're thinking about government contracting is to understand the industry that you're trying to get into. So that means taking some type of a course and making sure it's a comprehensive course that's kind of like from the A to Z. You're not going to learn every single thing, but you'll learn enough about all of the different components of government contracting to get into the space confident and not make a lot of the mistakes that a lot of people make because you've had the... Um, prior knowledge. You took the time to understand the industry that you're getting into. So that is the first thing that you want to do. Like I said, take a class, get a consultant who's been in there, get a, a mentor, but make sure that you understand what government contracting is and what it isn't because it can cost you severely financially. I'm talking about if you get into the space and you don't truly understand it. So everybody thinks getting into government contracting, you're going to make a whole ton of money and you can, but you can also lose a lot of money if you make bad deals and you really don't understand the industry and how it works. So that's the first thing, understanding the industry in which you are about to enter. And the second thing is getting registered in SAM. So you've gotten your information, you understand, you have a basic or high level understanding of government contracting, and you know exactly what it is that you want to sell to the government, how you're going to sell that to the government, and now you're ready to get take the next step, which is getting into the system. And that system is called SAM, System for Award Management. If you're getting into government contracting, you must register within SAM and set SAM.gov, right? So you go into the system, you put all of your information in, um, you submit your application and you wait for them to approve or disapprove your application. There's also a notary letter at the end of it, a notarized letter that you're going to have to have you're going to have to send in to validate that you are indeed who you say you are, because there's been a lot of scams that have gone in the government contracting space in the past. So they want to really verify that the contact person is who they say they are. You're a legitimate person. So you're going to have to do that. But you definitely want to register in SAM, get your DUNS number, your CAGE number, and get yourself prepared to start the next phase of government contracting. And that next phase of government contracting takes you into getting state and federal certified, right? So if you're a minority person, there are some certifications that you can get on a state level and the federal level in order to take advantage of a set-asides and sole sourcing, sole 
sourcing opportunities in the government contracting space. So these are monies that are set aside for people who are in a minority group. And for the purpose of government contracting, um, white women are considered minorities as well. So if you are a, a female, no matter what race you are, you qualify to be minority certified on the state level and the federal level. On the state level, you can get um, disadvantaged um, business certified, um, women business certified. On the federal level, you can get women owned small business certified, veterans, disabled veterans, um, disadvantaged business, I said for the the state, you can do hub zone and you can do 8A certification. And there are a few out, few others that I know I'm not mentioning, but still that is the basic gist of it, right? Getting those certifications, which give you the leg up to get into the space and win subcontracting opportunities uh, for your business to get this process starting and build your reputation within the government contracting space. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to market yourself or and your business, right? And you're going to do this by creating what is called a capability statement. That capability statement is literally what it says. It highlights your capabilities to get the job done. Whatever it is that you're marketing yourself as, as a government contractor, it's a one sheet basically that puts down the capabilities of your company. So it's going to have a business overview of what your business is about, what your business does, who it serves, all of your NAICS codes, all um, your capabilities that you're able to do, all of your contact information for the company and who you've worked with in the past. That's kind of like the basic overview. There are a few other things that you can put on there, like your of course, you got to put your DUNS number and you have to put your um, you, you got to put your DUNS number. And like I said, your NAICS codes and your EIN number and stuff like that on there. But this is a really good tool to market yourself. So it's kind of like your business plan and your resume all in one. So when you're going out to con to network for the purpose of government contracting, you're going to take that with you. You're also going to put this on your website so that when people visit your website, they know you're capable of doing government contracting. You're gonna have it on your website and you're gonna have it in a downloadable form so people can download it and look at it. Cause you wanna be able to attract um, you want to be able to attract prime contractors and you also want to make sure that you um, go to matchmaking opportunities within your community so you can be meeting the right people. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to find opportunities. So you have done all of the legwork, you understand the industry um, to the best of your ability, you've registered in SAMS, you've done your certifications, you've created your marketing tools and you've been out there networking. Now you need to actually find the opportunities. So part of network is networking is to help you to find those opportunities. But beyond that, you want to be able to go on, um, the SAM.gov website because they also have an area where you can find available um, RFPs from the government or RFQs or RFIs from the government that they're looking for people to fill or looking just for information, whichever form it is, P, I, or Q, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you're going on there and you're looking on a regular basis to see if anything fits the industry or the skills, the capabilities that you have so that you can go ahead and apply for it. You also want to, like I said, keep in um, mind that you're looking for things that have set asides so that you can have that advantage of being able to bid on it and more than likely win that um, contract if you have the capabilities to get that contract done. You also want to make sure there's some other websites that you can pay for or you can get free of charge um, that will also have government contracting opportunities. You also want to make sure on a state level that you keep in contact with or check your local procurement office website as well, because a lot of times your state will list their um, contracting opportunities on that website. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your eyes open and your ears to the ground, basically, to make sure that you know what's out there so that when something does come available, you're able to go ahead and apply for it. 
And then the last thing that you want to do is to, if you do get a, co a contract, that you stay compliant. And even if you don't get a contract, you just want to make sure that you're always compliant within your business because people are going to be looking at your business before they give you a contract, especially if a prime is coming to you directly to sole source or to ask you to bid on a contract. It's because they've already done their background information. They know that your company's legit, that you, you're handling your business the way you're supposed to be handling it. And they feel that they have a level of trust that they can have in you to actually subcontract some of the work out to you. So whether it's before your business or during, I mean, sorry, before you start contracting or while you're contracting, you want to make sure that your business stays compliant, that there's not, nothing shady going on in your business and everything is above board. So again, that's a 6,000 level overview of government contracting and how to get into that space. Now, if you really want to get into government contracting, we do consult in that area. You can reach out to us and I should have had my information showing up all the time, but I keep forgetting. So um, you can reach out to us at TVA Consulting Group. The information is on the screen. It's tvacon.com, tvacon.com, tvacon.com. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, and contact us if you really want to get into the government contracting space and you are not sure how to do that. You don't want to make costly errors when trying to enter into this space and you want to be able to hit the ground running because, I mean, a lot of times people get the other things that I'm talking about where they're SAM certified and they have their certifications and they are not able to do anything with it because they really don't understand how to take those next steps that are actually going to be impactful and help them to move to the next level. So we can help you with that. So reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you to inject another stream of income into your business. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye.